Harley-Davidson's brand new iteration of their long-loved sporty motorcycle, the Sportster S, up against the very attractive and popular offering from Indian, the Scout Bobber. If you're in the market for a sporty cruiser, you will no doubt be drawn to these beautiful bikes. And while they are similar in a lot of ways, once we dig a bit deeper, we can see just how different these two are. G'day, I'm Quackerjack, and welcome to another video in the Versus series. Today, we are putting both bikes under the magnifying glass to have a detailed specs comparison and see just what the differences are between these two muscle cruisers. We'll be analyzing the styling, claimed engine and power specs, exhaust notes, weight, suspension and brakes, fuel economy, features, and price to see where they stack up. And while it may seem that one has got the edge, you'll see at the end that this is a tougher choice than you may expect. Now, before we get started, please do me a huge favor and give this video a like and hit subscribe if you haven't already to join our fast growing motor community. All right, let's get straight into it and have a look at the styling of these two beauties. The Sports Duress is the next generation of a line of bikes that has ranged back to 1957 and was a popular class amongst the Harley stable. It has an aggressive, sporty and sleek design with matte black finishes scattered throughout and an exhaust that is reminiscent to Harleys of old with a flat tracker inspired design. I'm personally a fan and really like the side profile. It reminds me of the Night Rod, although the front LED has seemed to be a point of contention for some and I'd definitely be throwing a different set of pipes on there as soon as possible. The Indian, on the other hand, I would say has the more traditional cruiser design, featuring a slammed stance and being very low to the ground. There are three models of the bike available, the Scout, Scout Bobber, and Scout Bobber 20, all featuring different handlebar setups and slight differences in the design, but all sharing the same powertrain. The Bobber is the lowest and sleekest of the models, with bobbed fenders and bar end mirrors to give it a streamlined silhouette. I really like the look of the low slung leather seat too, and out of the two bikes, think this one does have the coolest design. In terms of styling, it comes down to personal opinion, and I love the look of both bikes, with the Harley being more aggressive and the Indian suave. Let me know in the comments which one you think looks better. Onto the engines. The new Sports Duress is equipped with a 1252cc Revolution Max 60 degree V twin engine that can also be found in the new Pan Am. It has been slightly detuned here though and now produces 120 horsepower at 7,500 RPM and 125 Newton meters of torque at 6,000. The engine is a stressed member in the chassis to reduce the overall weight, and reviewers claim it has lost a lot of the Harley wobble, being a lot smoother at the lights and not vibrating as much. Whether or not that's a good thing is up for debate, but what isn't is the fact that this is an incredibly torquey bike with a huge amount of power accessible low down in the power band and should be a lot of fun on the streets. They claim it has a top speed of 137 miles per hour, and oh, also quick note, thank you to Harley for actually releasing official power specs for once, makes my life so much easier. Over on the Indian is a slightly smaller 1133cc fuel injected liquid cooled V-twin that is pushing out 100 horsepower at 8000 RPM and 97 Newton meters of torque at 5500. That means it has a claimed top speed of 120 miles per hour. And again, the torque is available low down in the range, meaning that no matter where you pull the throttle, you should have a nice kick. In terms of engine and power though, the Harley Davidson does clearly come out on top in this department with a larger overall engine and an extra 20 horses and 28 torque. That's quite a big difference. So while they'll both be a lot of fun low down, you'll definitely see more performance on the Sportster. Let's also have a listen to their stock exhaust sounds. That is the most unharley sounding Davidson I've ever heard. I suppose the new laws have kind of clipped their wings here though. Moving on and we come to weight. The new Sports Duress is one of Harley's lightest motorcycles and the weight saving techniques seem to have paid off. It has a wet weight of 228 kilograms on the road, which considering its size and engine that it's rocking is rather impressive. The old Iron 883 was over 250 kilograms and this new Sportster is only slightly heavier than the smallest bike Harley used to make the Street 500, which was 223 kilos. Combined with the engine, this bike should be a little ripper. The Indian Scout Bobber on the other hand, again, is a more traditional cruiser in the fact that it's carrying some extra pounds. It has a wet weight of 252 kilograms on the road, which is quite a lot more than the Harley. In this department, the Sportster again takes the win. Now, at this point, I have to say, while the comparison may seem one-sided, there is a defining factor between them that we will come to which really levels the playing field and could make or break which one you choose. Onto the suspension. 
Harley has tricked out their new bike with some flash new bits. Up front, you're rocking a Shower 43mm inverted fork with compression, rebound and spring preload adjustability and linkage mounted piggyback monoshock at the back, which is also fully adjustable. The bike has a lean angle of 34 degrees and seat height of 753mm with what they call a stretched riding position. Harley themselves describe this bike as having aggressive riding with sport bike agility and handling and for riders who desire top of the line performance and stunning style. Let's be clear though, this is no sport bike, but it is about as sporty as you get on a cruiser. It also has a six axis IMU with a ton of rider aids, which we'll discuss later on, but it really poses the question to me as to, well, why? The Scout Bobber on the other hand is a more analog bike. Up front, it's got a cartridge type telescopic fork with 120 millimeters of travel and dual shocks with 51 millimeters at the rear. Note that the Bobber model is an inch lower than the regular Scout, which amongst other things gives it that title. The seat height is so low your bum's almost kissing the cat's eyes, coming in at only 649mm off the ground. That means it'll be extremely easy to flat foot and manoeuvre, and it does have a more relaxed seating position. The lean angle is also a smaller 29 degrees, so you won't be attacking corners quite as much here. In terms of rider aids, well, it doesn't really have any. Some people may see that as a positive though, giving a more traditional and raw riding experience. As for brakes, the new Sportster S up front has a Brembo 320mm radially mounted monoblock 4 piston single caliper and at the rear a 260mm floating disc with single piston caliper. It also comes with cornering enhanced ABS as standard. On the Scout at the front is a single 298mm rotor with 2 piston caliper and a single 298mm rotor with 1 piston caliper at the back. All of the Scouts do come with ABS as standard too here in Australia. It'll really come down to personal preference as to which is better in terms of suspension. Although the Harley does have the more modern and sporty setup, where the Scout is a bit more basic and traditional in terms of cruisers. And for the brakes, the Sportster does have the Brembos, cornering ABS and bigger front end disc. But the Scout does have that larger rear brake. Overall though, the Harley would take the win here. Now, let's talk fuel economy, because I think that's a pretty under-scrutinized topic when it comes to cruisers. Harley has long been pretty below par when it comes to this, offering small tanks and in a lot of models not even including a fuel gauge. While the new bike does have a fuel gauge now, rejoice! The overall tank size is still slim and I would be hesitant to take this on a long journey into the mountains or rural areas. It has an 11.8 litre fuel tank and the economy that Harley claims is 5.1 litres per 100 Ks. That gives you an estimated range of around 230 kilometers per tank. Does that inspire confidence for longer trips? Uh, nah. -uh. The Indian is no better, even though it does feature a slightly larger 12 and a half liter tank. Looking at a range of rider reports, the most common usage seems to put it at around just under five liters per 100 Ks, giving it an estimated range of around 250. So on paper, the Indian Scout does have the slightly larger tank and better range. However, real world use in this department will vary, and I've heard rider reports from both bikes complaining of much lower ranges from each machine. I suppose you can't ask for too much considering the size of these motors, but larger tank sizes would have been nice. In this department, the Indian is the winner by a hair's length, but both are poor performers when it comes to overall fuel range. On to features. This is where we will see one of the biggest differences between these two machines. A couple things to keep in mind. First is that one of these two is a whole new bike and the other has been around for a while and is due for an upgrade. Second is what do you want these bikes for and what are they trying to be? The new Harley Davidson Sports Duress is jam packed with features and that's something I never thought I'd say about a Harley. The notable ones include a round 4 inch TFT display, Bluetooth connectivity for calls, music and more, moving maps navigation, 6 axis IMU, selectable and customizable ride modes including things like engine braking and power delivery, cornering enhanced ABS, cornering enhanced traction control, assist and slipper clutch, all LED lighting, adjustable performance suspension, cruise control, USB charging port plus a ton of customizable options. Oh man, mouthful. Kudos to Harley, they pretty much do everything at the new bike and while it all sounds terrific, I myself am not sure if that's necessarily a good thing, which I'll explain why in a sec. Over on the Indian Scout Bobber, it's a much more traditional offering, with the features being leather bobber style seat, bobber styling including low slung mirrors, USB charging port, ABS and analog speedo with digital tack. Really, the main standout feature for this bike is how it looks. God damn it's pretty. 
Now, again, it has been a while since Indian has updated the Scout in terms of features, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a revised model soon with new Dash and other goodies. In this category, it's a clear win for Harley, and as you've probably noticed, that's been a common theme throughout this comparison, but here's where the Indian really comes through. Price. There is a big difference in how much you'll have to pay for each of these two if you want to plant your bum on them. Here in Australia, the Harley-Davidson Sports Duress starts at $26,495, and this is my issue with it. I can't help but feel that if they didn't throw quite as many whiz-bang tech upgrades on it, it would be cheaper. I mean, really, does a cruiser need to have a six-axis IMU and the ability to control things like engine braking, cornering enhanced ABS, cornering enhanced traction control? Don't get me wrong, all of these things are nice to have, but I can't help but feel it may take away from the riding experience more than it gives. I feel like if you wanted a sporty bike like that with all those features, you'd probably just go and get a sport bike, wouldn't you? With a toned down exhaust and losing some of the Harley wobble and perhaps some of its charm, I think they could be alienating the people who are drawn to these bikes in the first place by making it too techy. The Indian is the cheaper motorcycle. Here in Australia, the Scout Bobber has a right away price of 19995 That goes up to 20995 for the regular Scout, and you can add another 500 on top of that to get the Bobber 20. So it's $6,500 cheaper than the competing Sportster, and that's a big difference. You could use that on a ton of accessories and still have some left over. The difference in price is also really evident in other countries too. In the US, where there is an option for a non-ABS Scout, you could pick it up from $8,999 or $9,8 with ABS, where the Harley starts at $14,999. That's more than one and a half times the price. In this category, the Indian wins by a landslide. And it presents us with a dilemma. Which would you choose? The Sports Duress, which is newer, lighter, more powerful and jam-packed full of tech, but expensive, or the Scout Bobber, a more traditional cruiser which still has a great torquey engine and is cheaper. At the end of the day, I see the new Harley as like a flashy new Apple Watch, and the Indian like a traditional wristwatch. Yes, one is better than the other, but do you want your watch to take calls and monitor everything about you, or just reliably tell you the time and let you appreciate its beautiful simplicity? I really like both bikes, but find it really hard to choose between them. So let me know down in the comments below which one you would pick and why. Thanks for watching this episode of the Versus series. Make sure to leave a like and let me know which two bikes you'd like to see compared next. You can also find me over on Instagram at quackerjack underscore. Thanks again for watching guys. Until next time. See ya.